Welcome, everyone. Welcome to NFCasts, the bioinformatics podcast where we discuss the latest advancements at the intersection of biology and informatics. In this podcast, we celebrate the brilliant people. We have one here today and organizations that are changing the world through advancements in both genomics and life sciences. Our guest today is Lorena Pantano. Lorena works at Next RNA as head of computational biology. She has a PhD in biomedicine. She's a founding member of Women in Bioinformatics in the Boston area. And just an overall real cool person that I've gotten to know over the last couple of months. Welcome, Lorena. Well, thank you very much. I'm very happy to have this time to chat with you. Yeah, me too. Let's jump in. We, we finally got rid of the lawnmower in the background that uh, was affecting our recording quality and such, so, so we can get going now. So uh, you're working in a brand new biotech company in the uh, Boston Mass area. I love startups. It's kind of what I do, but they come with their own set of challenges. So let's, uh, first of all, let's, let's tell us about your experience at Next RNA and working in a brand new biotech. Yeah, no, actually, I mean, I have to say this is uh, quite similar to what I expected. This is the first time that I joined that early in a company. And I, I really like it uh, because of the growing concept to be involved in the growing of a company. But it's true that challenges are not little. Uh, in my case, I become uh, the first uh, computational biologist here, leading the team, but I needed to build everything from the beginning, infrastructure. Of course, you don't know uh, everything, so you need to really uh, be well connected so you can get consultants and people helping you to build everything. I will say that for me, the two main keys to do very well is uh, making a good job at priorities, like what you can do, what how much time it will take and communicate that to your uh, leadership. Uh, you need to be very clear that uh, anything that is needed, like how much it will take, resources, uh, time and everything. So everybody is on the same page. And if you get that right, I think that is, is not that um, bad in the sense of the, the, the workload. I mean, you still have time to, to live your life and all that. You just need to be very good at this too. And you need to be ready to spend a lot of time hiring. But for me, it's great to be part of the core team. So that for me was the most important. Yeah, it's uh, for me, it's exhilarating to work in, a, in startups. There's you know, lots of balls to juggle and it's, it's uh, tricky to choose which ones you let fall on the floor, but sometimes you have to let certain things fall on the floor and prioritize as you suggest. So how do you see the role of bioinformatics in the biotech world and particularly in a startup like yours? So I really think that it's very important. Uh, to be honest, it's very weird to get uh, the computational biology group uh, in, in a startup. Normally, people tend to work with uh, consultants and, or maybe hire a very junior person. Uh, but I have to say that my experience is that this uh, is much better to try to put it as soon as possible. And an example of that is that I had an experience that uh, a small middle-sized biotech uh, had one issue uh, in terms of optimizing the expression of a gene in, in a specific uh, uh, cell line. And, and they spent, when I joined, it was like they have been working that for months, like more, almost a year. And it's like, we don't know why. And they have uh, sequencing data. So it's not like they didn't even try with the right type of data, but, um, it was not the right approach of the analysis. And then I, I came with another colleague and we work in one month. Oh, this is what it was happening. Okay, fix it next. And this could happen in the second iteration. So you don't need to spend one year trying to fix something that it can take two months. And for the startups, that time is a lot. Like it could be the difference to get funding, more or less funding in the next round. So this is what I've, what, I think that it's very important to really invest in that from the from the very beginning. Makes it makes a ton of sense, obviously. Uh, and you're obviously a woman in bioinformatics and in management. We can certainly see that tech and executive management and tech has been really underrepresented. I'm not uh, shocking anybody with the, with that news. Underrepresented by women, that is. And uh, of course, I'm not shocking anyone. Tell us about your experience and your views of you know being a woman in bioinformatics and being in management in a startup. What what are you seeing in that regard, and and what can we do differently? I guess. 
Yeah, so it, it is true. I mean, I, I have to say that when I was uh, looking for a job, I, I felt like I'm I'm ready to to the, that jump to be the head of computational biology. Um, but I but I found that uh, many many companies when I was just a, you know learning about what was out there, uh, you will find that many are led by men, um, and. And I don't think that is a problem of women in computational biology because I have seen many, like I, I see in companies, women in that group in the intermediate level or just before that leadership level. So I don't think that is an issue, but for some reason, men are getting more there. Um, I think that you, I cannot simplify that fact in a single sentence, but I believe that, uh, that there is uh, some bias, society bias there. Uh, I think that uh, uh, there is a difference in behaviors uh, in men and women. And just to we maybe talk a little bit later about this, but uh, I refer always to this tech talk uh, about Freshma Savjani. She she explained very clearly uh, like how in general we are teaching our boys to be brave and our girls to be perfect. And that specific difference in how we approach the the situations is making that some skills uh, for whatever reason have been enriched in the leadership and have been enriched in men and we as society needs to to fight to break that uh, difference and just let people be whatever they want to be uh, no matter the gender oh definitely uh, make sure we post that ted talk somewhere down here on the on the screen so people can see it. But, uh, you know, obviously, we collectively want to improve things. So what, what do you have for suggestions? You know, how do we improve the, the situation for women looking for leadership positions? And, you know, particularly in computational biology, what can we do there? Yeah, I, I mean, it's a, it's a, a long term effort, right? You cannot change people and society in one day. But for sure, I think that we need to work in everybody. We need need to work in awareness on why this is happening and educate themselves. Uh, I think that for sure learning in the perspective of being a person in church of uh, get a, a leadership position in computational biology, uh, it will be good that is like to really think about what skills we need, uh, really get to know the candidates, what really will be good for the company, and maybe just not follow the easy path that is like, oh, I know that if I hear uh, these certain words that I'm good, I'm an expert, I can do this, that is enough to hire a person. Uh, and I uh, and I think that this will take time and it's a job of the, the manager, but as well, I think as a woman, it's pretty of the women as today, because you cannot change the world and you are living in that current moment uh you as well need to be aware like if you feel like you oh, i want to try to be there because i have been spending seven years as senior and i'm good with people i feel like i'm good at uh, team building uh, i want to get to that next level so i i really think that in that case women need to be aware of how they express themselves just because that is the current situation and for myself i did that when i was looking for a job i was like it doesn't need to be, you know, like you are going to be an arrogant or lying about yourself. You can be your true self, but just be careful how you express yourself and, and be mindful that that you are expert in a field. Um, you don't need to be perfect. You don't need to know anything. But you, if you have overcome through years uh, any problem you get into, then you are ready to that. So you need to express that to specific people who are in charge of put you in that role. Yeah, you, you gave me a specific example earlier when we were talking before we recorded about how women will, will speak in a certain situation versus how a man speaks in a certain situation. Can you can you repeat that? Yeah, um, I this come mainly from uh, from my experience in um, being an editor in a specific journal for software, uh, open software that we do all the reviewing through GitHub and I actively looking for 
uh, women's to be reviewers. And, and when I talk with the reviewers uh, to get into that, I always get uh, very specific uh, different answers for any of them. Like for men, I always like if I say, okay, this is a paper about this language and this field. And it's like, oh yeah, I can do it. It's no problem. I, I did this, this small script and I think that probably that is enough to, to understand that. And it's like, okay, great. What I like, I mean, to be honest, I like, I, I don't think that you need to be like super good to, to, to make a good review. But then when I go to a woman, normally what I find is like, no, I think that, I mean, I work one year in this, but I don't think that is enough or, or I work in that part, but not the other. And I'm not sure if, if I can do this. So it's like different level, like they will have the same knowledge uh objectively but then they they see themselves differently so right. that that uh, is an important factor so men sort of claim they're uh, are very uh, confident and claim they're experts where women are, are a little more humble about their skills i think is what you're saying and i, I want to i specifically brought that up with you because i wanted to call you out on it because when we were working together and you were a customer not so long ago and you're installing our next tower product you said oh, i'll try and install it i'm not an expert i don't know if i can do this i'll call you and it turns out you were probably the fastest, smoothest installation we've ever had. And it turns out you probably were an expert. So uh, I think uh, maybe you're guilty of that as, as well. And I know I'm probably guilty of being, being overconfident and brash sometimes too. So uh, I guess I guess it proves your point. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally guilty. And, and that is why I take this so seriously. Uh, as I say, I don't think that you need to change yourself. I think that there are situations that is okay. And maybe it's, I mean, if you feel like, okay, next time maybe I will be different because whatever, but it's more about the specific opportunities when you talk in an interview or specific people to maybe be aware. But yeah, I do that a lot. Um, that is how my brains work. So I just try to not do that in a specific situation. <laughs> Gotcha. That makes sense. I think. So you're very open and vocal about women in biotech and you participate in, in a variety of groups so supporting that effort. Um, you know, you're working to change this, the situation, I think, which is which is admirable. And I think it's awesome that you're striving to make these changes. You're, you're openly queer. And I get very uncomfortable when I use that word, to be honest, because I'm not used to using that word to describe people that are gays. And maybe you can explain why why you chose to have me use that word. And then we could talk a little bit about that as well. Yeah, actually I, I thought about that and, and I discussed with other people in the same community. And, and I chose that word because many decades, uh, um, uh, like long time ago, that was using a bad connotation. That is true. It's like, it was just to insult people. Uh, in this community, and but uh, in the last years or many several years, the community is trying to reclaim that war, and we just reclaim because it's like you can use it and it's fine. There shouldn't be any war to insult anybody in any kind of community. So there is an effort to use it more and more in communication. Uh, so we try to normalize that, and and we remove one word to be used against a specific community and that was the main reason i i chose that to to contribute to that movement i mean that makes sense and i'll i'll do my best to to use the proper proper terminology so so how does being queer present challenges for you you're in bioinformatics you're working with all these people all these men what are the implications on interviewing the workplace and your life in bioinformatics yeah i mean to be honest, in this specific uh, place in the world, uh, it got a lot better in very fast. But I, I remember when I was younger, I was uh, afraid, uh, you know, when you met people at work on interviews, like you, I was afraid to really say that first and you go and people assume that you are going to be a straight. So they talk about your, in my case, husband. And many times I didn't correct, and it it makes you feel pretty bad because it's like I need to hide that because I don't know how people will uh, react, and and I have faced uh, experience where you know people get super like oh oh you are that, and it's like okay I'm a person you know <laughs> like you don't need to do that. <laughs> um, so there has been many, many moments that I hide myself 
uh, lately because there are a lot of more openings and people have become um, better in trying not to assume things. Uh, it has been easier and I do it right away because at, at, the, at this point for me, it's just, I just want to work or be in places where I feel comfortable. So as soon as I, I get that out, uh, it's better for me. And, and we say that we are coming out of the closet almost every, every now and then. Yeah. <laughs> And, and you came from Spain seven years ago. Big, big change for you, obviously, new country, um, new experiences. Tell, tell us about that, about that move and how that worked out for you and what challenges you faced. So, I mean, now, if I had to say now, it is like, yeah, it was great. It's, it's the best decision I did. But uh, at that moment, it was hard, you know, new culture. Uh, I came with my wife, uh, she couldn't work at the beginning. That is the worst thing that normally happens to, to people who come to this country in this way. Um, you spend all your money at the first month because you don't know that life is that much expensive here. <laughs> and, and to be honest, I got this job and rated to before is like when I was in the interview, uh, like uh, they asked about my life. We were just being like outside mainly of the formal interview and of course somebody assumed that I was straight and I was like well I I just say my spouse works in blah 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 and went with that but when I got the 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 the, the job I really clarified with them uh, like you know I did that but it's not true I really want to get it out because it's better so and of course no issue at all uh, and that helped a lot to, you know, to start over in a place where you can be yourself. And of course, I mean, scientifically speaking, it was the best move I ever did. But, you know, it, it is a change and it was not easy for the first year. <laughs> I bet. Yeah, that, that's a big change for sure. So let's shift gears here and focus on uh, some rapid fire, rapid okay. fire questions. Oh, uh, okay. I'll ask you a quick question. You give me a, a quick answer. Okay. So what, what sports do you watch and play? Uh, I play a lot of basketball, archery, karate, and some rock climbing lately. Well, that's a lot. So archery, how did, how did you get into that? The, normally it's because in case of an apocalypse it happened, I have a, a cheap way to defend myself. <laughs> yeah, so everybody gets into it. They're worried about the apocalypse and zombies and such. Yeah, that makes total sense. Uh, <laughs> You, you have a black belt, you, you told me earlier. So how, how does it feel to get your black belt at, at 38 years old? You don't well, mind me mentioning your age? Yeah, it feels different, to be honest. And at the beginning, I didn't think that was going to be that uh, a big of a moment. But I feel very, I felt very proud of myself. Like, you can do anything at any time. Yeah, I, I'd be proud, too. I'm actually a little jealous of something that... Uh, I haven't achieved and, and would have liked to. So that's uh, that's very cool on your part. How many times have you been asked about what your husband does? You mentioned that earlier in the talk that people people ask about your husband. I have to say, I don't know. It happened every every two weeks once at least. Yeah. People. <laughs> Maybe a, do a dollar for each time and you'd be a yes, wealthy please. person. I can invest. Retired. <laughs> yeah, I gotcha. Uh, you have a collection of geek t-shirts. I think a lot of people in our industry have geek t-shirts, but you have a whole collection. Which one's your favorite and which one do your friends and colleagues like best? It's the same, to be honest, and it's the one that says science doesn't care about your opinion. <laughs> I like that. Hey, that's even uh, even pretty timely with what's going on with with COVID right now. And I won't, uh, I won't get into specifics and... In, uh, cause a divide with with the audience about any specific topics on that but that is that is timely for sure hey Lauren I had a lot of uh, fun talking to you I think it was was really interesting and it challenged me and I really appreciate you taking the time to be so open with with us and the audience and and uh, to we just uh, really really enjoyed uh, doing this and hope people enjoy it as well so thanks for being with us well thank you very much it was super fun you bet.